Hello, my name is Michael Piero, and I'm going to be going through the final project for this class. And this is going to be part one of the project where we download the airfoil and make it an X405 and then use the airfoil to make a wing. I'm um, using these dimensions right here for part B. So the first thing we do is go to the UIUC airfoil database and we go to the Clark Y airfoil because that's the one we're using right here and we save it as a dat file. Save. And now we can go ahead and open up and you'll see these coordinates right here. And we need to get rid of these 61 right here. And a problem I was having in x 5 with these coordinates was that they weren't converging. So what I did was I I flipped from zero to one. I flipped them, as you can see, using Excel. It's a very long and tedious process, which is why I'm not gonna show it right here, but that is what I did to fix these coordinates and it allowed the points to converge after that. So once the coordinates are all flipped, um, go to XFLAR5, direct foil design and open the coordinates. And we'll have our airfoil right here. Next, we will do an analysis on the airfoil. And for this project, we had to use a Reynolds number of 300,000. And we were testing angle attacks from negative five to 20 incremented by one degree. I already have that in right here. So we click analyze. And as you can see, all the points were successfully converged. If they didn't, you'll get an error that popped up and then you'll know what to do from there. So now that airfoil is all done, we will start our wing design. Um, we're going to create a new plane with, we're not using any elevators or fins. Um, so define the main wing, we'll name it rectangular wing with an aspect ratio of five. And in part one, we have a wingspan of 1.5 meters. So we can go ahead and put that in. You'll see right here, wingspan of 1.5. Uh, cord length was 0 0.3 meters, and there's no offset. So we can see right here we have a projected area of 0 0.45 meters squared, which matches up right here with what we were supposed to have, and an aspect ratio of 5. So when we check right here, we have an aspect ratio of 5, and everything looks correct. So we can add in the airfoil as the cross-sectional area and increase the number of panels and save. And save. So with that, we can define an analysis. Um, and we need to match our Reynolds number to 300,000. Luckily, all you have to do is type in the velocity and it will show you the Reynolds number right there. So 15 meters per second is what we're using. Uh, we're gonna do the LLT uh, method and everything else is staying the same as well. And again, we are testing from negative five to 20. Um, angle of attack incremented by one. And we do have some errors popping up um, saying that it is outside the flight envelope. So what that means, well, let's go back to here. None of our graphs are showing. So because it's outside the flight envelope, 
we need to change the Reynolds number of our airfoil so that it will be in the flight plan mode. So we can test above 300,000 and see if that fixes it. If not, we will test below. Okay, we'll go back to plane design now and let's see if that fixed it. Um, it did for the most part. So we have everything besides 19 and 20 degrees and that is going to be fine. So now we have all of our plots, um, CL versus CD, CL versus alpha, CL over CD versus alpha. And we'll change this one to CD versus alpha. Um, current graph, find graph settings. Okay, so now we have CD versus alpha. And with all these, we can export them to Excel by exporting the graph and we can make our graphs in Excel from there. That way we can put them all into one graph. And that is how you do part one of this project.